Hey friends, how are you? I'm excited to talk to you today. Talking about one of my favorite subjects. I don't know, they're all my favorite subjects. I just love talking, so let's just, let's just call it what it is. We're talking about teens today. I love talking about teens, with teens, all things about teens. I think it is so fun and so fascinating. Yes, I have a million teens. My oldest is 20, almost, actually no, he's 21 now. So technically he's not a teen, so I only have four right now. But uh, my 11 year old is right there on the cusp of it. And so I just, I'm really immersed in teenage lifestyle in my own home. And then I've just really loved coaching teens. And I love the perspective it gives me when I get to hear and see a teen's point of view and also the parent's point of view. And what it's so fascinating when you get to hear this full story. And I always coach individually on those things because people are just more willing to be candid when the other person's not there, right? The parent's probably not going to be like, I think my kid's a crackhead if their teen is sitting right there. But when they can coach one-on-one, -on -one, they can be much more open. And same with the team. They're not going to say anything about their parents if their parents are right there. So just giving them that safe space. Um, but what I have found is interesting is, do you think your teen is incompetent, right? Do you think that your teen cannot make choices? It doesn't have any drive, doesn't have any aim, goals, and all those types of things. So what I'm finding is a lot of parents will feel frustrated about this. Like my kid is not driven. They don't have this goal. They don't have this drive. Like how are they going to provide for their family? What are they going to do with their life? And the parents kind of freaking out over here. And so they're pushing their teen like, hey, you need to do this and, and let's go and let's let's make some decisions. Let's let's get some in. Let's let's have a drive, like some drive and some vision, right? So then the teen's like, okay, I guess, like I will go get a job. So the teen goes and says, okay, I'm going to go get a job at whatever place. And the parent's like, what? That is a stupid place. You should not get a job there. That is a terrible place. I'm like, okay, I guess I won't do that. Teen says, okay, I guess I can take these classes. What? Parent again saying, why would you take those classes? You can't have a family and support a family with those types of those classes. Those types of classes would be completely pointless in your life, right? So you start getting into this really interesting cycle where parents are like, my teen's incompetent. My teen can't do anything. My teen takes no initiative, has no drive. And the teen is looking like, I keep trying. And every time I do, you shut me down. So what would you like me to do, right? So then it just gets into the cycle of frustration and anger and nagging. And then a teen, sometimes a rebellious teen is going to tell you what they think about this, push back, go do the things you tell them not to do just out of spite. Maybe they'll become a people pleaser and just say, hey, okay, just tell me what, what you want me to do, which will actually create a kid not making any choices because they'll be so afraid they'll make the wrong choices, which will make you even more frustrated because you're like, see, they never take initiative. So it's this really interesting cycle. And a lot of it is just so fear-based. You're so afraid that your teen just might make the wrong choice. But what if you're wrong? What if you don't know what's best for your teen? Is it really the best to nag them and push them a certain direction just because you think that's the way they should go? The way that they should be? What if you're completely wrong? Why does your teen need to know what they want to do in their life? Why do they need to know what career they want? I don't know about you or your spouse. If you knew, like, I always wanted to be a life coach. I didn't even know life coach existed when I was a teen, right? I just wanted to be a mom. And I love being a mom, right? I didn't even think I'd ever really be working. But I love what I do. And if you would have forced me as a teen to pick a career or pick a path, I, I would have shut down. I would have just picked something random and then gone with it because you kept pushing me to say something, right? So it's so interesting that like we want our teen to make this vision, make this plan when their prefrontal cortex hasn't even finished developing. And we're asking them to plan far ahead and they can't even plan a month ahead of time, right? So like we're, we're pushing things that maybe are a little bit beyond their skill level. And then we're also, when they do take initiative and when they do like make a plan, like, great, I am going to go and become a tattoo artist. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, that's not okay. I said you could become an art teacher, but not a tattoo artist, right? And they're like, oh my goodness, I can't do anything right. Like, I make a plan, you tell me it's stupid. I, I try to do something, you tell me that's not right. And so really getting curious if you have this story about your teen being super incompetent and then you almost through your actions 
you're making it very true because they become incompetent because every time they try to do something, you shut it down. You tell them it's stupid. You tell them it's the wrong way. So I want you to get really curious to see if you're doing anything like this with your teen or even your younger kids who want to be a superhero or a ballerina or an astronaut, right? Do you shut them down? You tell them why it's a stupid idea and why it will never work? If you continue to do stuff like that, you're going to shut down their little part of their brain that wants to dream, that wants to go big. Why not let them dream? There are people who become astronauts. Why not your kid? There are people who become professional sports players. Why not your kid, right? How amazing if your kid knew that their biggest cheerleader was their parents, no matter what they had like decided to do with their life. So I want you to kind of think of some journal questions. And I love journaling, so I thought maybe it'd be fun to add in some journal questioning into my podcast. And so I will put these questions, you can write it down now while I, I say them to you, or you can go back and I will be putting these in my weekly email and you can just get it from there. You can subscribe to my email through my website, www.coachmegthomas.com or on my Instagram at the hippie mama. And in my profile, you can grab a link there to subscribe. But thinking about like, why am I so worried about my teen and what they're doing? Am I trying to force my teen to do a certain way. Another thing to get curious to with your teen is if they do have a plan, like, okay, I'm going to be a professional musician. Then do you make it your goal and your dream? And then you try to push them into it. And maybe it was just something they said off the cuff. And then you make it all about you. And then you're fighting with them again. Cause you're like, you said you wanted this. So I'm making sure it happened instead of allowing them the experience to make it happen or the experience of making it not happen and failing because you can learn so darn much by failing and failing is not a problem. So some of the things I want to challenge you to do today, well, actually I want to challenge you this. I want to challenge you to just listen to your teen and all their ideas, right? So if you do ask them like, Hey, do you have any plans? And if they say no, like, awesome, that's fine too. Right. But if they're like, yes, I want to join the circus. I want to challenge you to just listen. And especially your little kids, because if you want your teens to talk to you, listen to them while they're little, while they're t- telling you about Spider-Man. And I mean, I know so much about superheroes. It's insane, right? But when you listen to them, they know when they're older that you'll listen to them as well. But just listen to them and ask questions and not asking questions in like, that's stupid. How do you think that's going to work? But asking questions in a very curious, loving manner. So if a child says, I am going to go join the circus, like, oh, interesting. What made you decide to, when to like, what inspired you to join the circus? Well, I was watching this. I, what was that TV? What's that movie? It's a big show. The Greatest Showman, right? Like I was watching The Greatest Showman and I saw the trapeze act and I just, I don't even know if they have trapeze act on it. And I saw that they did this amazing stunt and I was so inspired that I wanted to become that and I want to do that. Like, oh, that's so amazing. That is so cool. Like, what do you, what, like, what's your next step? What are you going to do? Like, I don't even know. I just want to, I don't, I, I'm going to go start researching it. Right. So just getting legitimately curious from a loving place, not a judgmental place and asking questions, because guess what? A lot of times with teens, they're just saying ideas and they just want to be heard and they probably know they're crazy. And a lot of times when you just let somebody talk, they will start to hear that maybe this is crazy. Like, oh my goodness, I would want to be a trapeze artist. I like, I don't like gymnastics. Actually, I'm afraid of heights. That's actually a stupid idea. I'm like, oh, it would have been cool though. And I would have been at all your shows that I could have gone. I know mom. I know you're awesome. Thanks. Like, oh, thanks for just listening to me anyway. Right? So imagine how different your relationship can start looking with them if you just listen to them and ask real questions. So some of the things that could happen is one, they know that you want to hear what they have to say. So maybe today it's a circus performer and maybe tomorrow that they want to be a journalist. And maybe the next day they want to change the world, whatever that looks like for them, right? But they know that they, you will come and listen to them, whatever their ideas are, even if they know they sound a little bit crazy. Number two, it keeps the lines of communication open. When your teen knows that they can come to you and talk to you about their crazy dreams, wild things they want to do, guess what? They also know they can come and talk to you 
when they're having a bad day, when they done they've done something they maybe they know they probably shouldn't have done, seen something they wish they wouldn't have seen. When those lines of communication are open, it allows that space for them to come and talk to you about when things aren't going well. And number three, it helps keep your relationship close. So let's say your teen does go and joins the circus and it ends up being an absolutely awful experience. You can keep that relationship and that connection and that love with them. They know that if they make a mistake, they can always come back to you. Like, I love you. You tried something and it didn't work. Okay. Like, I'm your safe landing place. I've talked about this before, that I want to be the lighthouse. So when my kids go out into the storm, I'm a lighthouse so they always know their way back. And they're always welcome back in my home. So here are some journal questions. I want you to think about if you are struggling with your teen and some of their ideas and like things that they're telling you that they want to do with their life. I want you to get curious. Here are your questions. Why am I afraid of my teen's plan? Really get curious with that one. Like, what is the worst that's going to happen? And maybe let your brain just go there for a minute. Like, why am I so afraid of this? Because if you don't know, you need to keep digging, right? Like, it just feels bad. Like, okay, great. Why does it feel bad? Well, they shouldn't do that path. Why shouldn't they do that path, right? And really dig in until you get that bottom answer of why are you truly afraid of your teen's plans? Next question what would happen if I trusted in them to make the best choice for them? So let's say your teen says, I want to join the circus. You're like, okay, awesome. This could be amazing. And I trust in you to make the best choice for you. And they're either going to, they're going to learn something either way. They're either going to learn that this was absolutely amazing, or they are going to learn that this was not the life for me. And sometimes by making wrong choices, we can learn really, really great things from those failures. The next question, how do I keep a connection with them no matter what they decide, right? And this really comes down to how do I love them no matter what they decide? I've heard a couple stories not too long ago and I've read a couple and one of them was a mother whose daughter left their church and um, they were fighting over it and they were contentious over it for a while and then the mother kept praying and the answer that she got kept getting was love your kid, just love your kid. And so this mom was like, okay, we have different beliefs now. We have different values, but I can love her. And so this mom just loved on this daughter so hard. And sadly, the daughter died in a car crash. And as the mom went through the daughter's journal, there was just page upon page about just enjoying how much she and her mother loved each other. Like, I just love how much my mom loves me. My mom's so good to me, right? And what a treasure that was for that mom to find. Um, there was another story and I can't remember it off the top of my head, but, of basically the same idea of a teen making a choice that a parent was like, I, I disagree with this strongly. And the answer was to love, love them, love them. And eventually that teen came back and because of that mother's love pulled them back in. Right? So how do I keep a connection with them no matter what they decide? Now that doesn't mean that you don't have to have boundaries, right? Like if you have a child who lives a lifestyle that you're like, that's not in my home, but I can still love you. So I'm gonna go meet you somewhere. I'm gonna text you all the time. I'm gonna call you, but like, I don't allow drugs into my house or whatever that looks like for you, right? So how do you keep a connection with them no matter what they decide? And the last one, how could their plan be absolutely amazing, right? Because we, our brain loves like the exciting fear-based stuff, right? Like, let me tell you all the reasons why this is absolutely horrible. What if you intentionally make your brain think, why could this be amazing? How could this be amazing? So my kid's going to join the circus and oh my goodness, they are going to be picked up by a talent agent and they're going to get a TV show made about them. And they are going to then have these nonprofit organizations where they go through all these kids who have all these amazing um, athletic skills and teach them to do tricks and pulls these people out of poverty from all over the world. Like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad my kid joined the circus, right? Because our brains want to go to that negative point and sometimes we just need to force it like, but what if? What if it worked? What if it was absolutely amazing? So I would love for you to journal these questions and I would even love for you to email them to me and just, I would love to hear your perspective of maybe something you're struggling with your teen and like, oh, what if it does work out? What if everything's okay? 
So I want to challenge you to do those journal questions. And I would love to hear from you because I love talking to people and I love hearing your story. So if you feel so inclined, please email me back your questions, your journal um, answers. All right, friends, have an amazing week and I'll talk to you next time.